Do you want to know what separates your everyday sales rep from high performing pros? It's one thing and that is focus. And not focus of the mind, but focus on strategy. The real pros know that smashing through quotas is all about working key accounts, clients with exceptional revenue potential. So how do you go about identifying these key accounts so that you start bringing in those big fat commission checks? Well, let's find Hi, my name is Will and I make Selling Simple. Now in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the ins and outs of key account selling. First, we're gonna cover what key accounts are in the first place and why you need to focus your efforts on them rather than chasing your tail with random smaller accounts. Then we're gonna take a look at the key account criteria. So what to look for, what to avoid, like the plague. And then last but not least, we're gonna look at key account list. And we're gonna cover a four step process so you can start building yours today. Does that sound good? Well, let's get right into it. So I get it, I get it, right? You've got a sales target to hit and the sooner you hit the target, the better. Otherwise you're gonna just be prolonging the pain, the stress of working in sales and you're not gonna get a big fat bonus at the end of it. With that said then, why do most sales professionals spend all of their days chasing their tails. They fire off hundreds and hundreds of spammy emails and they make dozens of random cold calls with no real system in place to make sure that it's all gonna work out. There is zero consistency. And as Refract AI's co-founder Richard Smith recently told me on the Salesman podcast. Activity drives success, um, and it, but it's ultimately it's consistency is the, is the big thing. You know, unless you're consistent, you're only ever gonna get very mediocre results. If you're not consistently making moves to land big moneymaker accounts, well, you're just losing out. Because those small deals that you make each week, each month, will get you close to hitting your target, but those big ones are the deals that I like to blow straight past it. So if you wanna start crushing your sales quota, you need to be closing what we call key accounts. So first, let's define what a key account approach to selling actually is. Is. And it's a selling approach which offers strategic value to specific accounts whilst distinguishing yourself from the competition. So that then begs the question, what are strategic accounts? So let's use an analogy of the people in your life to explain this. But you've probably got hundreds of acquaintances that you're happy to speak to every now and again. Perhaps you're happy to help them out as well if there's a, there's a job that's gonna take less than five minutes to complete. But it's likely that there's only a handful of people that you're willing to drop whatever you're doing right now to spend time with or help out. These are the strategic people in your life. You get more out of interacting with them than others. And in sales, it works the same way. So think of all the accounts in your territory as being in a pyramid shape. You've got your key accounts at the top and they make up the smallest percentage of all your accounts. Then you've got your good customers in the middle and below them, you've got the, the general riffraff that you have to engage with at some point, even though they're probably not gonna lead to millions and millions of dollars in revenue. Now, what's funny here is that if you run the numbers, I'm pretty confident that you'll find this pyramid shape has an inverse relationship to the revenue that your customers bring in each year. The general riffraff is gonna bring in the least amount of money. The good customers are gonna bring in a decent amount of cash and the key accounts are gonna bring in most of all. In fact, your key accounts will usually bring in more revenue than the other two groups of accounts combined. That means if you can just close a few more key accounts each year, you can massively, massively scale your income potential. So that leads us to the question, how the heck do I uncover these key accounts in the sea of crappy lead data that I've got access to? And the answer is simple. You're gonna use what we call a key account Matrix. And we go a lot more further into this inside Seller Made Simple Academy, which you can find over at salesman.org. But here is a high level overview. So if we draw a chart with two axes, X axis is potential future revenue. And the Y axis is the current relationship with the account. We're then gonna split this into four segments and we can label the segments selective investment accounts. These are where you've got low or poor relationships, but there's high potential for new business. Then we've got strategic investment accounts. Here you've got good relationships with these clients and there's potential for new business. We've got proactive maintenance accounts. So here you've got great relationships, but there's a low chance of growth. And then we've got the avoid these bastards at all cost accounts. Here you've got low, crappy, rubbish relationships, and there's a low chance of new business coming from them as well. So to find your potential key accounts, all you gotta do is look through your lead data and find the accounts that fulfill two criteria. They've got the potential to generate lots of revenue and you've got good relationships already within them. That is the key fundamentals to developing very quickly new key accounts. You gotta have good potential future revenue and good relationships within the account itself. So finally, how do you build up your key account list? Well, all you gotta do is follow a clear four step 
process. Step one, identify your key potential accounts. If you've got a CRM system, this is dead easy to do. You may be able to apply the selection criteria that we just outlined to your entire customer base in the software itself. That being said, if you identify your key accounts and you end up with 500 of them, well, narrow things down even further and focus on just 10 potential accounts to go out over the next 12 months or so. That way you can focus your efforts, at least at first, and you can see if this is working or not. Step number two, you need to rank your key accounts for the hottest prospects at the very top and the lowest at the bottom in relation to potential revenue that could be generated. And this shouldn't be a guesswork job. We need to uncover the potential profits that we can actually generate here. So let me give you an example. Let's say you're selling uh, management services to haulage companies. Well, when you're trying to work out how much revenue could be generated, you could rank these businesses on how many trucks that they own and operate. When I went to medical device sales, I looked at how many endoscopes the account currently had, or perhaps how many operating rooms that they had to work out how much revenue I could pull from the account if we closed it and it became a key strategic account for us. Next, we're gonna evaluate our strengths within each account relative to our most relevant competitor. So let me break that down. Think about how you compare on price, deliverability, uniqueness of your offering, and additional business services you can provide, variables like this versus the competition who might already be in the account that you wanna get into and turn into one of your key strategic Give yourself a score out of five versus the competition for each of the 10 key accounts that you've outlined. Which leads us on to step four. And now that we've actually built up some data here on a, on a spreadsheet or a piece of paper, however you're going about doing this, it's time to make some hypotheses about the potential accounts that we should and probably shouldn't go after. And if you'd like to make this data more visual and you want to share it with a sales manager, a sales leader, or you need to get more resources from the company you work for to make these accounts happen, then you can plot the data from step two on the vertical axis of the graph and then the data from step three on the horizontal axis of the graph that we talked about earlier on. And you can split this up into the quadrants that we've already discussed. This will instantly give you a excellent visual representation of which accounts to focus on and which that you should definitely ignore. Because once you know where to start, where you should be focused, the next step is just making it happen and getting in touch with these accounts and getting some business done. So focusing in on key accounts can be huge for your selling success. I want to drill into your mind that key account selling is a selling approach which offers strategic value to specific accounts whilst distinguishing yourself from competition. It's a bit of a clinical definition there, but I think that is important when we are uh, defining key accounts and actually going after them. On top of that definition, a key account is one with high earning potential and high potential to have strong relationships compared to your competition. And if you want to build your own key account list, it's dead easy, identify potential accounts, rank the earning potential in those accounts, compare yourself to the competition, make some hypotheses about which accounts are best. And then after that, stop focusing on the small accounts that are on your territory and start nailing these massive ones if you want to generate massive commission. So there we go. If you enjoyed this video, find out click the video that's on the screen right now and continue making selling simple.